You have the floor. Thank you, Macarena. I hope you can hear me. I'm going to share my screen. Well, could you please tell me if you see well? Yes, I'm Thomas Lynch. I'm going to give a presentation because of a tweet that mentioned a company that I work for now. This is my tweet that I did with my company. And the tweet said that our company did not implement a BGP safely. So I went to that site and I saw there that there was a flaw that uh, we didn't uh, implement BGP safely. I won't discuss what uh, implementing uh, BGP um, uh, safely is, and uh, I won't discuss philosophically why a company says that uh, claims that others are doing things wrong. So I say, well, let's implement a B uh, RPKI and join manners to leave these people, Carlos and Israel, who gave me this T-shirt, to leave them happy. So our basic topology of uh, uh, RPKI validation has two different phases. One of them is for clients and the other is uh, for the network. The client's part, we had already implemented it since the day the company started. Basically, a customer wants uh, to have a BGP session with us and wants to announce the prefixes. So what they do is add that prefix to the database and there's a system behind that checks it. If there, it has an ROA that's valid and it matches the prefix and the autonomous system, then a list of access of the host where the uh, virtual machine of the client is uh, located will um, act up. If um, they don't have an ROA and they haven't signed the RPKI, well, the whys of RPKI and ROAs are going to kill me. If, if you don't have an RPKI, we confirm through the email since everybody has signed the ro ROAs. So that uh, security issue is already implemented from the client side, but what we didn't have was RPK validation against our transit providers and against the IXP parts and uh, the peers, the IXP peers and the private peers. So from then on, we decided to implement policies to enter inbound polypis, BGP inbound polypis in the transit provider and uh, in the private peerings and also to use RPKI cache servers with a protocol, with an RPKI RPR protocol. So what is this that we see here? We have Juniper routers, uh, virtual machines, and this is not a problem in the company where I work because it's a cloud provider, so virtual machines is the minor problem. The configuration in the side of the router, here we see, let me use this pointer, the router here was very simple. The RPKIs, we use a routinator that is an open source software. And what it does is to have the database of the ROAs and so you can go and check it and uh, set queries. In the router part, we have two main configurations. One of them is the validator, that is to uh, do the session against these validators. For the case of Juniper, you start a session. We have two validators per data center and we raise uh, sessions against each of these validators using uh, default port 2222. The sessions as, uh, say dual 
stack in quotation marks because the session between one validator will give me the information for IPv4 and IPv6 independently of the version that the I am using for the session. After configuring the session, I already have the rotinator in a virtual machine, whatever you want to put it, and I start receiving prefixes with uh, the so-called the route validation records. Route validation records. So, these route validators are basically the ROAs that entered the RIRs, were entered in, uh, by the companies into the RIRs. This is a prefix slash 32. The maximum length is a slash 48, and the autonomous system is 64496. And the state is valid. So, once you have that session, you need to validate the routes against our transit providers. This is done using, in Juniper, they call it BGP policies. In Cisco, okay. Uh, that is, they, they have different names. So, and the states are valid, invalid, or unknown. Valid. The prefix has an RV and matches the autonomous system, but also uh, the, the prefix and the maximum length accepted for that registry. Invalid is when they don't match. Either the autonomous system does not match or the prefix length. And this is a big issue. Being invalid is a big issue. We're going to see it later. And unknown means that it does, the prefix does not have an RV entry in that database. And then there's a fourth state that also uh, uh, exists that is unverified. We haven't verified against a validator. For instance, we have a policy where at the beginning, we allow the passage of all the XPs of the of a certain um, of somebody without certifying or without validating. The basic configuration is quite simple. You're going to see that uh, copy each other, checking what I received from the BGP protocol, look for it in the database of the invalid, and then to put and to name the state invalid. And you can add a community. This is a community that is reserved for RPKI. Communities are origin validation state invalid. And as it's not valid, then I rule it out. Luis is speaking. So the same thing happens with the unknown. I accept the unknown because uh, it may be um, you're going to see the number the people that don't have the ROAs. So I accept it and the valids, of course. Somebody is not muted. Please, I ask you to mute your, uh, your computers. So the, the policy is quite basic. And then, and I see the validation status of uh, the routes. So here you have a valid and an invalid route. And notice that the valid state has its next stop, and the non valid, the invalid, has a discard. So this 2001 DBA 32, it has an invalid, this would discard the packets sent to that prefix. Some data. 
These data were taken in one of the routers, taking the entire routing table received from the transits and the peers. And we've seen that the percentage, the approximate percentages are maintained uh, for the internet protocols. And the invalid, you see that they account for a minimum percentage, 0.07%. Valid ones, and this is uh, the striking thing, they don't reach 30% in any of the two versions. This means that there are not too many people signing the ROA. And the unknown, of course, are about 80% in IPv4 and about 75% in IPv6. Of the invalid cases, the most striking thing, and uh, here I want to stop for a minute, of the invalid things, the most striking thing is that these are prefixes that are registered, for instance, a slash 32 of IPv6. It's the slash 32 is registered as a maximum length. They put a slash 32 and then they send slash 48 or slash 35. These different slashes. Uh, um, so, but usually then afterwards they uh, break them down. And so what happens with these invalid? So my message here is when you validate, there are companies that are signing the ROAs, but unfortunately they do it wrong. So please pay special attention in the value that you put in the maximum length. You have to put three values. The prefix you want to send, the maximum length, and the autonomous system that uh, the source of the prefix and all of this, the 0.07%, these are generally slash 24, slash 22, slash 48, slash 32, etc. Now, how long did it take us to implement this project? At the time, we had 17 data centers with three transit providers, one IXP and three private peers as an average per site. We did, uh, we conducted a test in Amsterdam, uh, paying tribute to Schneider, Rob Schneider, who's uh, the guy behind all this, all the routinators through data centers, the installation, we are a cloud provider. It was installed in one day, a configuration, um, after the routers for the sessions against these routinators, it was also one day. And then rethinking this after these tests in a site, redraft the policies took us a couple of days and then implementing the policies five days. Overall, it took us 14 working days that is almost three weeks. So it's not a project to implement the RPKI filters. It's not a time, very time consuming, but it's extremely helpful as you will see now. So after implementing this, then is BGP safe? I went to the page again, to the website again, or I connected from a virtual machine of a company, and I checked that it was. We had implemented BGP, and it was safe. It was safely implemented. So we, uh, are we happy now? We said, no, that's not enough. We said, let's join manners, that is to sign the actions required by manners. Basically, these are actions that you would say, well, I'm going to 
comply with manners. So I, what I'm going to do is from my, uh, I'm going to uh, increase the security, the safety of uh, the internet to my service. And you're going to discuss that later. Now, how did uh, joining manners help us? Well, we did a free release and we sent tweets saying our company is already safe. Uh, visitors, we joined manners and manners also did a press release with us. But they went a bit beyond because as soon as we signed with manners, Andre said, no, you can't associate because you have this, this and that problem. We solved it. And also for the manners people, they found a little problem with one of the RIRs and they solved it. So we helped each other. Not only was it good for us to join manners and see where we still have problems with our clients, but also for ISOC, it was good to check this small problem with one of the RIRs. So, is this enough? Is my network secure now? Can we get rid of those prefix lists, those uh, root maps? Can I disconnect everything and only leave RPKI? Because a, a website will tell me that I'm safe. No, of course you can't. We are still, we still have to filter logons and RFC 1918. And if our network, if our, in our network, we have prefixes that for IPv6 are over 40 slash 48 and for IPv4 larger than a slash 24, we have to filter those and we also have to filter what our clients spy on us. RPKI will help us make the network more secure. That's for certain. We are going to filter, for instance, that a company in some country may start disseminating on purpose or not all Google prefixes happened in the past or Facebook. Uh, prefixes. So all those prefixes will be filtered by all the autonomous systems in between. So this is something that should be done in the community. And that's why my piece of advice is configure RPKI, not just for a website uh, to be nice with you, but also for your own, for the sake of your own security and, con and joining the manners will be extremely helpful. You're going to discover that it's not just uh, uh, saying uh, I did this action and uh, that's it. And that's all. That's everything I had to tell you. I don't know what my time is. Um, I have seven minutes. No, yes, two minutes for the lecture. And then we have five minutes for questions. Would you like to start with that? Yes. Let's start with the questions because I'm done with the presentation. Okay, the question is by Facundo Townhauser and Townhauser is yes. Do you think uh, that the site of, uh, check if we are doing these things right, maybe a viable alternative for raising awareness among the operators? Well, precisely, we configured everything because Somebody had sent a tweet, one of these sites that uh, tell you whether you're doing things right or not. In my view, they are important. Now, I think there should be much more information in that site. That is, that RPKI and ROAs are a significant part of security of BGP and the autonomous system but not just checking with this site whether we're doing things right or not. For instance, one of the things that we could have done with this site was to send to know the prefix that the company checks. 
So if you send it to null, you route it to null, this prefix, I did it at home with my operator. And I put null in my router uh, and, and my and the result that I got was that my internet provider was secure in RPKI. There should be much more information in these sites. Very good. We have a second question. Diego de la Vega. The validation of RK, RPKI in routers, does it increase the consumption of CPU in the memory? No, that's a good question. But we haven't seen a, a greater consumption of CPU and memory. To give you an idea, we are implementing this in Router Juniper. These are not absolutely the best. Uh, they are not those beta, tera, megabytes. They are uh, megabits. They are much simpler as routers, and we haven't seen an increase in the consumption of CPU or memory. Now, the peculiar thing about Juniper is that there are some routers that do not support it. For instance, the QFX uh, 5100. Um, so you have to check well what router. I imagine that the same may happen with Cisco, etc. Thank you, Tomas. We have two more questions and three minutes before your time is done. Guillermo Paliero says, does anybody know of anybody implementing RPKI in MicroTik? I think there was a talk about this by Ariel Weher. Is he there? A talk on precisely on RPKI PKI in MicroTik. I don't work with that line. The lines that we work with are Cumulus, Brocade, and Juniper. And we've always configured it in Juniper. So I owe you that information, maybe for next time. And Victoria asks, can you configure RPKI only in the router, or do you necessarily need to have a server to validate the routes? Well, here, the server will speak with the RIR's databases. It, uh, it will download all the ROAs, all the existing ROAs, a's in all the RIRs, and that is not done by the router. And there, there you would have a lot of memory consumption. What the what the router does with the RPKI RTR is to consult this server and to download the information required. The information required is the prefix, the CDR the maximum length and the autonomous system. That is, it only downloads a piece of the information that the router needs. I think that would be an answer to your question. Well, there are no more questions. Good. We, we still have two minutes to wait until the next meeting. Luis, oh, there's another question. Yes, there's another question. It says, minimal, what minimal characteristics of the hardware should the server have? A Raspberry Pi is enough. A Raspberry Pi. If you look for Routinator, R-O-U-T-I-N-A-T-E-R, you'll see that if it's supported by a Raspberry Pi, you don't need triple core, etc. Any server can support.